entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? What do you do? Run faster. Kohalayim Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rekar Kadash Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock and Shalom and salutations to all you Akim out here that's pushing the words of truth and sincerity Shalom to the faithful elect hopeful elect Akim and Akwa scattered around Shalom we finished off last time was Isaiah thirty four and eight for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. We know who this is talking about. You go up to verse six. It says Basra, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah is naming names. All right, their their stink shall come up from their carcasses. The mountain shall be melted with blood. Heavens rolled together as a scroll. scroll. His sword bathed in heaven shall come upon Idumia, the Greek word for Edom. So Edom Esau is the notable figure who the Most High denunciates and hates. As far as uh, prophetic, uh, you know, prophecy goes amongst all the nations of the heathen, Esau, Edom has it the worst, right? So let's get more into it. Uh, it this is um, Salakia. This is um, Isaiah 41. The title is Israel Encouraged. Oh, yeah. The Most High wants us very encouraged through his word. This is our comforter, right? Isaiah 41 and 1. Keep silence before me, O islands. Yeah, there's a lot of Japhetic islands. There's a lot of Ammonite islands. There's, you know, uh, all type of different nationalities have their different isles or islands. And the Most High wants them solid, meaning he wants them to STFU and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. So a great judgment is coming. That's why he wants his people to acknowledge, acknowledge him and be encouraged. Who raised up the righteous? Uh, who raised up the righteous man from the east? Called him to his foot, gave nations before him, and made him ruler over kings. He gave them to the dust and to his sword. He has driven them to the stubble. And as you realize and go throughout the history of the scriptures, you realize that the Most High has called different nations, kings, to his friend or his 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 uh, righteous one, right? And I believe in this uh, specific encounter is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. All right. He also called uh, um, Cyrus the Great to do a, a bidding for him. He caused the kings of Assyria to do his bidding. So kings are nothing but a tool in the Yahweh, Yahweh the Father's arsenal that he can use to mitigate uh, force and judgment upon various nations. All right. And so that's that's just how you know that the Most High is constantly uh, working on the minds of these kings because this is who he orchestrates to impute judgment or bring down his wrath and his judgments all right that's why he allowed e esau edom to get an advantage like he has now with this technology um being that he's he's in the forefront of missile uh icbm thermonuclear technology now as you can see the scriptures in isaiah 14 says hell shall come up and meet thee right and so hell now not being a place underground where um um uh, you know that Satan, the the bad angel, was cast down forever to poke you with a pitchfork as you burn forever in eternal fire beneath the subcontinuous, right? Beneath the continental, uh, it's not that's not hell. Hell coming up to meet thee at thy coming is when all these nations, right? All these little ones, these nations, uh, who were uh, looked over as mighty looked over as strong now they're becoming strong they used to be weak but they're becoming strong and they're able to meet uh, uh esau at his technological advanced level as far as building their own nuclear arsenals that's why these various countries called the proliferation of nuclear weapon war all right which means i believe the furtherance of nuclear weapons in the hands of multitudes of different nations not just one so mad mutual sure destruction there's no other possibility in which uh, uh, America is going to go out with fire except through uh, mutual assured destruction. All of these nations will mutually assured, assuredly destroy uh, one another in this third world's war. This is Jeremiah 10 and 25. This is going to be short and sweet today. All right. It's titled The Satire of Idolatry. Verse 5 says, They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they can do no evil. Neither it is Salakia. 
I'm meant to read verse 25. Bear with me. That was dealing with Christmas. We know and love that scripture. Uh, I start at verse 24, Jeremiah 10 and 24. Oh Lord, correct me with judgment, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. You have to be afraid and be fearful of the way in which the Lord corrects. He's a wrathful, vengeful uh, power taking back uh, judgment upon the third and fourth generation. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not. This is what Jeremiah is asking of the Lord. This is what we all are asking of the Lord. To pour out his fury. We understand verse above that he will bring you to nothing. And he will correct you uh, with his anger. All right. If you don't ask him for mercy and turn back to him in these days. And the way he's going to correct people in anger is through fiery, wrathful judgment poured out without indignation. Verse 25. And upon the families that call not upon thy name. These are the heathen nations, man. They don't call upon the name of the Lord. All right. They do not. They call upon the name of their uh, heathen gods. It says, for they have eaten up Jacob. Who's Jacob? Israel. And they destroyed us, man. And this is for furtherance of the proof that we have through uh, history that they have done this. We have biblical history where the scriptures tell you uh, in Psalms about Esau saying, race it, race it. Even to the foundations thereof, they cried for our destruction. And so the most I remembers that and we do through scripture. We also remember in recent history based upon the um, um, documentation of slavery. All right. We got ship records showing us. We got movies documented. We got um, their own speech. Their own tongues condemned them. All right. They know that what they did. All right. It shows on their countenance when they interact with us that they feel guilty about the legacy that of their of their ancestors in this land of America. And that's where the pride come from. They have to ignore it in order to feel good about it. It says, For they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. So there's no way around it, man. The nations are guilty of purge of trying to purge out Israel, trying to take us out. And once again, here we're fast forward into 2023 in the time of the New World Order, Agenda 2030, and so forth and so on. It is a program to depopulate the world. This is it in the NLT. Pour out your wrath upon the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on the peoples that do not call upon your name, for they have devoured your people Israel. They have made, they had devoured and consumed them, making the land a desolate wilderness. So that's what we understand about Esau Edom. He's a, a contender of wickedness. All right. The spiritual demon Satan works through him, and, and that is exactly what our, our existence is like under Esau Edom devoured daily this is um jeremiah 25 verse 13 and the uh, title of this chapter is prophecy of the captivity right we got to know what it's all talking about here put into context and i will bring upon that land all my words which i have pronounced against it that is the veracity aka the truthfulness and the exactness of the heavenly father he will do what he says he will do and he will not change it all right it says, even all that is written in this book. So now that we know that it is a book, all right, is the qualifier of where we get the message of the Heavenly Father. It is through the book. So we can reread the book. We can understand the book. And then we can understand the, the, the um, source of where we get the will of the Heavenly Father. The source of where you shot, where the prophets got the will of the Heavenly Father. It's all sourced through this book. It says... Which Jeremiah have prophesied against all the nations, right? So it's a common thing for prophets to speak on behalf of other nations, thus saith the Most High, the Lord, right? Israelite prophets prophesying, condemning uh, foreign or heathen nations all throughout the scriptures. Jeremiah is no different. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves serve themselves of them also and i will recompense them according to their deeds so that's that payback once again these nations gotta get paid back they got to i mean they got 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 to get paid back man all right that's a portion of our inheritance is that we will inherit the heathen for our slaves as our slaves we will have slaves all right a slaves is a, a tool of the wealthy it is a tool of the elite it is a tool of the ruling class to have slaves it is their right to have human slaves okay that's why there's even laws written about 
how Israelites would have slaves, but they would deal with their slaves without rigor as they would deal with the other slaves that were non-Israelites. Let's go continue. And according to the works of their own hands. So everybody's getting paid back with what they deserve to get paid back with. Verse 25, for thus saith the Lord power of Israel unto me, take the wine of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. They shall drink and be moved and be mad because the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. All right. In verse 28, to wit Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the prince thereof to make them a desolation and an astonishment, a hissing and a curse as it is this day. That's our people. You know that we definitely under this curse to this day. 2019 pharaoh king of egypt and his servants and his princes and all his people and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of uz and all the kings of the land of the philistines and ashkelon and azah and ekron and the remnant of ashdod edom and moab and the children of ammon and all the kings of tyrus and all the kings of the zidon and all the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea the dan and tima and buzz and all that are in the uttermost corners and all the kings of Arabia and all the mingled people that dwell in the desert and all the kings of Zimri and all the kings of Elam and all the kings of the Medes and all the kings of the north afar and near one with another and all the kings of the world which are upon the face of the earth and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, O power of Israel, drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because the sword which I send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take it a cup at the hand, uh, at thine hand to drink that thou shalt say unto them thus saith the Lord of hosts he shall certainly drink you shall certainly drink for lo I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name and should ye be utterly unpunished that is the question for all you other nations who can see that the Lord has definitely allowed us to drink of the cup do you think you will be unpunished do you think you're special are you the special people no, we are so that if the Lord did this to us, what do you think he's going to do to you? It says, ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words and say unto them, the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from the holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they had that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth the noise shall come even from to the ends of the earth from the lord have for the lord hath had a controversy with the nations once again that just like he had a controversy with zion in isaiah 34 he talked about that where where you know he in the nlt it says you know they shall be punished on that day when the punishment for uh what they did to the lord's people israel right and the controversy is a, a disagreement there's a disagreement and it's been prolonged and it's heated now and the and the heated disagreement is what with the nations have done to the lord's people it says he will plead with all flesh that plead does not mean begging that plead means he will judge all the flesh look into the words right he will give them that are wicked to the sword thus save the lord thus save the lord of hosts behold evil shall go no shall go forth from nation to nation in a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth so we hear about a right whirlwind we hear about evil we hear about a great noise this is the great hearing about a sword this is the time of evil that's to come man this is the time of devastation to come this is the time when the most i will send swords flying oh from east to west north to south from different nations the medes right persians and their swords all right uh, uh esau and his swords uh, uh, Moab and their swords sending swords over in the form of intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles to devastate and destroy the different nations who the Lord has a um, what is the word he has an argument or he has a disagreement with and the word that they use here is he has a uh, just like that uh, what does he have Y'all yeah, a controversy man all right he got a controversy with these nations man so you know that's another just an uplifting thought to go through your day just know that whatever nation says something looked at you crazy funny it doesn't matter 
the Lord got a controversy and is prolonged and is heated and he will not acquit the wicked. He does not forget one day to us. One day to the Lord is a thousand years to us, man. It's not the same. OK, everything that happened happened all yesterday It's fresh on the Lord's mind. It's heated and he's going to bring that controversy. and He's going to plead with the nations. They shall not go unpunished. I brought this out. This video is edifying. Top of work till next time. Shalom. Ba -ba -ba.